Hello, UCAR. Peter Christensen here, coming to you from the CEO's desk. Going to talk really quickly about this, the new UAR, UAR form, uh, the Seller's Property Condition Disclosure. Now, Craig and Lance have a great video that they put on their Facebook page um, that, that really goes through this in depth, section by section. So I'd encourage you when you have the time, go look at that. I'm not going to talk about this in that uh, kind of detail today. I want to give you a quick overview of a few highlights, things you might need to know. First of all, don't get scared away by it now being 16 pages. I know, I know the first time I had a draft thrown at me and I saw it was 16 pages, I said, whoa, what is going on here? Really, there's 90% of it is the same as it was. It's, very, it's not, there's that, not that much different to it. What they've done is formatted it better. I think you would uh, have all had experience where you had sellers that would skip sections. They weren't sure. It was more of an I don't know, and they felt uncomfortable marking no, which really in the old format, uh, no meant I don't know. Do you have knowledge of? No. That means I don't know. But people feel like no is so definitive, they'd rather have a not applicable kind of option. This now has that, right? I think the old, old version had that. They brought it back in, into this one. And it flows in sections nicely. So you can kind of see, you know, there are a series of questions, right? If yes, then you got to answer this and then that. Now it flows to where they're all boxed off. And that formatting really uh, made, made the spacing much different. Uh, much more different and, and added length to it. So it's not a lot more to answer. It's just uh, now a more logical format. But one big thing I, I noticed, a big difference in this one, is in the notice section right at the beginning, the second paragraph, it talks about if a buyer's brokerage or agent is representing a buyer and there's an unrepresented seller and they decide to provide this form to the seller, that they in no way are implying that they represent the seller. They're doing it as they're in their capacity of representing the buyer because they want the buyer to have this information. Now, that's a, that's a big deal and a question I've had through the years. If I'm representing a client and on the opposite side is an unrepresented individual, then am I allowed to give forms? And, and in general, I'd say no. I think that it's dangerous. It's a dangerous line to cross because you really do start to look like you are representing that individual by implication. Here they've put really great disclaimer language in there, and I think this is a scenario where the forms committee felt comfortable saying, yeah, maybe, maybe it is appropriate as you represent the buyer, because the buyer wants the seller to fill out this questionnaire for the buyer's benefit, that we can make it clear we are representing the buyer in this capacity and no way representing you, seller, and give them that, provide them the form and uh, allow them to give that information back to the buyer. Now, I think that's a, there's a big difference in this scenario and providing another form for, for a seller or buyer, an unrepresented seller or buyer's benefit, where they're not trained on how to fill it out, where there are uh, issues of what is that uh, form steering them towards that I'd say, uh, I wouldn't be comfortable as an agent giving that to an unrepresented party. But uh, this one, they have uh, decided to put that language in to try to make that uh, possible, make it be able to use, be used in that way. So that's a big, I, th I think that's a big deal. It might go overlooked by some. But in the effort to get that information for the buyer, this is the language they've come up with. So uh, kudos to the, the forms committee for all the work they put in on this. Um, I hope to see some further, not changes to this document, but maybe companion documents that we'll see in the near future. I know we've talked about it with the committee. Uh, so, yeah. Go check it out. Go check out uh, Craig and Lance's video. I might highlight in another video after this a couple other changes that I think are, are big. And, uh, yeah, maybe we can do a couple videos on this. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, this is not legal advice. This is legal information only. If you need specific legal advice, please contact your attorney. Thank you.